he was he was my child that was my helpful child. And he kind of took the role of father because my other two children, their father wasn't around. My name is Jermaine Scott. I'm 42 years old. I'm from Springfield, Ohio. I've been incarcerated for almost 25 years now for a crime in which I didn't commit. I was linked to this crime after receiving stolen property, which was the use of a stolen credit card that was linked to the death of this man, unbeknownst to me. Mike and Terry gave me that credit card in exchange for the gun they lost. Police had more valuable suspects than myself, but due to the credit card usage, I was deemed a killer. There's just no way humanly possible I committed this crime. My greatest desire was to have a family. You know, children, being there for my brothers and sisters, because you know, my dad passed. And they didn't have nobody. They still don't have anybody just like me, you know? So that is what I'm missing out on. Prosecutors in the Jermaine Scott trial argue that Jermaine single-handedly shot Bertram Thomas and robbed the victim's home all in a span of two minutes. The timeline, based on the testimony of Mike Ennis and Terry Portman, who are also suspects, proceeds as follows. From 4.30 to 11.30 p.m., Mike Ennis, Terry Portman, Jermaine Scott, and Bertram Thomas were hanging out in Bertram Thomas's basement where the alleged crime took place. Mike and Terry were enjoying sodas and playing pool while Bertram Thomas was in the other basement room watching a video on television with Jermaine Scott. Mike and Terry claimed that Jermaine Scott came into the pool table room angry, stating that he was going to smoke Bertram Thomas. Soon after, they hear a gunshot and see Bertram Thomas's body fall to the ground and witness Jermaine Scott coming down the basement stairs. The two then state that they ran up the basement stairs, past Jermaine, out of the house's rear door, and began fleeing down Mead Lane. While they were running, the prosecution claims that Jermaine ran upstairs. Despite never having been to this home, the claim that Jermaine knew which door was the victim's bedroom. While a crime scene was later examined, they found that the bedroom door had been locked, meaning that Jermaine would have had to have found a way to kick down the bolted door. The prosecution's theory then makes the assumption that Jermaine, having never been to the home, searched through the bedroom. He was able to find the victim's wallet as well as his money holder. He also found the victim's checkbook, but only tore out two checks. After he took the victim's items, he cleaned up the scene, leaving a clean room that the crime scene investigators later reported. Again, despite having never been to the home, the prosecution claims that he managed to locate the secret hiding place in the home's kitchen where the victim hit his garage door opener. Jermaine is then said to have gotten into the victim's car, started it, and caught up to a fleeing Mike and Terry who had only made it a little ways down Mead Lane. In total, the prosecution claims that Jermaine Scott killed Bertram Thomas, searched through his house, knocked down a locked door, found numerous valuable items, located the victim's secret hiding spots, managed to clean up any evidence of a theft, and cashed up to the two men who were fleeing in the space of two minutes all without leaving a trace of DNA evidence. I definitely felt an attitude of, man, this guy, he's a little street punk. We don't care what anyone else is saying, what the evidence is saying. We're saying he done it, so he done it. So I asked Jermaine, well, where were you? Where were you when this, this happened? He was with a, la a young lady called Heather Banks. He told police that he was with Heather and gave them her name and her contact details. And they never made contact with Heather. My public defenders, when I mentioned her name, it was just a nice a lot push off. Like she wasn't of any importance. 
during the last seven years, I've been in contact with Heather and Jermaine has and said, would you still be willing to give your alibi? And she said, sure. Even to this very day, I don't understand why no one's ever talked to him. And one of the things that we're taught to do, which is wrong because it causes problems, is to accuse them of having committed the crime or having something to do with the crime. First, they start off with, well, we just spoke to Mike and Terry. They put you there. So with their statements and the fact that we, we got your fingerprints in Mr. Thomas's vehicle, as well as his house, just tell us what we need to know and we'll get you out of here. The neighbours they did talk to, one in particular, Mr Goodwin, very clearly states he saw Mr Thomas on the 4th of December. This evidence was ignored. It completely contradicts the date of death of the 3rd of December. Would you be willing to do anything within your power to prove your innocence? Any tests, any DNA, whatever it takes. I tell anyone I get a chance to speak about regarding my case that don't listen to me. You know, I'm going to proclaim my innocence because I have everything to gain. Let my case and what the police did and did not do prove that I don't deserve to be in here. What needs to be done next is Jermaine needs legal representation, real legal representation to, to, to spur this on. There is enough evidence there. Just give my case a chance. One time. Fight for me. One time. That's it.